All right, looks like the heat sink did not make any contact with the back plate and its add-ons, so I think we are good for testing. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video, and today we're back in the Ultimate Steam Deck, and we're going to make some modifications so we can overclock our Steam Deck with little to no fear of that IC chip overheating. Um, that is a big problem already in the Steam Deck when it comes to overclocking, and it's more of a problem with the ultimate backplate because the M.2 dongle that we put in place is blocking that chip and it does not attach to aluminum heat shield anymore. So we're going to fix that problem and a couple more problems that we have in there. But after that video, we're going to go ahead and go into the overclocking. And with the overclocking, we're going to play playing Witcher 3 on a 2K screen high setting preset with FSR 2 on. The recording of that video was done on the Steam Deck through OBS, so keep in mind that those frames are running a little bit lower than they would if we weren't recording natively on the Steam Deck. And one more thing before we get into this video, and it's a big problem. This is the reason why it's taking so long to finish this video, and it has to do with overclocking on Windows using Smokeless. And basically what is happening is regardless of how high you clock your CPU on smokeless when logging into Windows it will not use it it will only ramp up to its highest capacity from what I can tell for example stock steam deck runs at 3.5 gigahertz you can clock it to 4.5 gigahertz through smokeless but when you're in Windows it'll only boost to the gigahertz what it can handle so for for my steam deck it, regardless if I clock it at 4.5 through smokeless, it'll only boost to 3.9. And you'll see that happen in the benchmarks. Keep that in mind. Maybe it's just my Steam Deck that does that. Maybe I'm a one-off, but I can tell you for a fact, I updated the BIOS on the APU. It's a new one. It came out March 22nd, and everything is up to date, and I'm still getting that problem. But it's not really a problem per se but so it's it, it's a bit of a problem only in a sense that you can't really ultimately push your steam deck to the point of instability but you know what maybe it's a safeguard uh, maybe it's just my steam deck so i don't know but other than that let's get into the video sorry guys my allergies is going wild today so i'm super congested i'm just a congested person in general we're in here Inside the Ultimate Steam Deck, this is a shroud for M.2 case. This is just a bunch of hot glue. So this is what it looks like inside. Um, basically, we have our dongle just attached inside, just folded over. This glues onto the back of the case. If you watched the last video, you know one of my main problems is this IC chip. And I'm just generally worried about it getting a little hotter than it should. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take a look at our spacing. So we have this VRM right here for power delivery controller. I don't know what this is. Could be one or the other. All I know it was actually cooled before uh, with on the heat shield with a thermal pad. Now there's no thermal pad on it. But remember the ultimate Steam Deck backplate has a built-in fan. So I'm not really worried about these chips per se. I'm more worried about the IC chip that's hidden behind this M.2 extension. So what we're going to try to do is try to figure out a way to secure it in a sense of maybe putting a heat sink on it and maybe adding a copper shim to this controller right under here. But we'll need to take this tape off first. All right, so we have a little baby copper shim and I'm pretty sure this thing's more aluminum than copper. This cheap ass freaking thing from Amazon. Poppy here. Guys, thank you so much for getting this far in the video. You're gonna notice a couple things are different. I got braces now. My neck is completely blasted. And I just wanna say thank you for making it this far. And please hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of our other videos. If you're not gonna do it for me, do it for her. Do it for Zena. For every sub we get on this video, she gets a treat. But it's better than what we have, and I cannot be bothered to cut this copper piece right now because it is 
a thick boy, and I will need to go outside. Um, mm. So, that's our IC chip down there. As you can see, I actually did disconnect the battery. Um, the reason why I did that is because I last thing I want to do is somehow short the system trying to get this thing in place. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to glue it in place. And that's okay to do it on this chip only because I can still attach uh, it to the aluminum heat shield with it uh, with this copper shim glued in. So we're just going to take some uh, thermal glue. like that was more than I need cool there you go <sighs> copper shim glued onto our IC chip I'm not too worried about this I don't even know what this is I could look it up but I just know it was cooled before now it's not but I don't know if that's too big of an issue um, we could just throw a copper shim on there and what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a bridge with this copper shim to sit on top of this. And I think we're going to need a thin thermal pad. See how that's cleaned off there. And we still have our adhesive on the other side. Pull this back and we should still have quite a bit of adhesive on that side perfect exactly what we're going for then we're going to put a small mil uh, thermal pad right there we're just going to put this bad boy right on top here so we put a thermal pad right there it's a 0.5 millimeter thermal pad which should give us the height difference between this and the ic chip i kind of want to throw the battery back in Thermal tape side it's just going to sit right on top of the housing for our battery. And we're just using that as a, you know, adhesive strip just to keep this um, in place. Yes, we are technically tying, heating this thing up too, but we have direct cooling in this area. That's completely fine. One of the reasons why I'm super okay with that is because... I'm actually going to put a heat sink right on top of this thing. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and actually place this right on top of it like that. Do you not want these things to pop off? Let's just double check to see if that fit clears. Perfect. Look at that. So what we did is basically made a junction from our IC chip to this um, heat sink. Uh, which is just sitting right on top of our battery connector, which is fine. I'm definitely going to get warmer, but we have a lot of thermal capacity there now. Last thing is this um, chip down here. So, like I said, I'm not super worried about these things just because we do have direct cooling. So, I'm more worried about the IC chip. But just just to make sure we don't destroy it, we'll go ahead and... We'll add a shim um, to this. I'm just going to use the adhesive for this one because it's such a big shim. I'm not too worried about it. Um, it can absorb a lot of heat. Let's just say that. This shim will be able to absorb a lot of heat. So, that should just slide right in like it did prior. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And now, we're pr pretty much, we're really safe now. This, this, um bridge that we created from the ic chip is going to definitely help keep a lot cooler um i'm not even going to thermal probe it i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to do so real quick we have not changed the thermal paste yet in the steam deck i find that from my research that there's almost no point in doing that um, most th regular thermal pads or thermal paste are going to be just fine Unless you go to the crazy, like that, that uh, P7950 from uh, Honey. That stuff supposed to, supposedly works very good, but I'm not doing any of that. Alright guys, so one thing we're going to do differently than we did in the last video is another thing. We're going to do a proper ventilation mod on this uh, Steam Deck backplate, the Ultimate backplate. 
the ultimate backplate. Oh, I can't get that glue off. And all we're gonna do really is we're gonna pull the charge this port off and we're gonna cut a hole through here. Alright, easy hole. Cool. And I'm actually gonna place this thing right here. We are destroying the hell out of this case. But that's alright. All right, so here's how this is gonna go down. Everything is nice and secured in there, we're good. All right, cool, so this is our housing. Okay. That's gonna hold that in place. Now we're gonna throw another one over the top here, just to make sure. I don't think that's this is actually that necessary, but why not? Cool, so we got cooling there, cooling here. It's gonna be great. Beautiful. Beautiful. Slide this cover back on real quick. There we go. Wow, it actually even looks better than it did before. Cool. That spacer worked beautifully. Spacing. All right, there we go. Mark. Um, we're just editing it. Oh no, my shroud came off. There we go. Okay, let's screw her down. And we are done modding it. We only can put four screws. Um, these internal screws don't matter anymore right here. Uh, mainly because um, we've already secured the APU uh, cooler. We've gone ahead and tied our Ultimate Steam Deck to the mothership, which is a 2K monitor rocking a 6700 XT. We are playing The Witcher 3. All the preset is set on high. Um, Steam Deck itself is running Bonestock 3.5 on the CPU and a TDP of 15. Outside, we're going to get about frame rates between 60 and 70 frames. Um, you notice on the right, our CPU is pegged 100%. Remember, we are recording an OBS as you are watching this gameplay. Um, CPU is pegged at 3.47. Uh, frames in town are going to be anywhere between the mid 40s to mid 50s, kind of staying around the mid to high 40s most of the time in town. Our GPU utilization pretty much peaks in the 8082, but for the most part, it stays in the mid to low 70s. Outside, we're going to see a little bit better frame rate peaking at 70, but sticking to the 65 area, mid 60s. Right here, everything is the exact same, same presets. Everything except our TDP has been pushed to 24 but the CPU is dead the same. Only real difference in here that I notice is two things. Our RAM usage has gone down for whatever reason. Um, and I'll say the utilization on the CPU on our right hand side stays pretty much pegged at 100% more than it did on our previous test. But I'm just looking at this kind of un objectively i'm just tr i'm calling things out as i see them but pretty much it looks pretty much the same increasing tdp did not help whatsoever in increasing performance and while boosted to a whopping four gigahertz in that same tdp of 24 you'll notice we'll only stay around that 3.8 area on our cpu on the right hand side uh that is for the same reason i said in the beginning for some reason, regardless if you boost it to 4 or 4.5, it will only do what it wants to do, which is a 3.8 for my Steam Deck. Um, and uh, it's probably a safe place to be, too, because you're not getting any type of tearing or artifacting uh, by over pushing the CPU. So I guess this is the smoothest way it will run, which is sadly on only increase of about 3% overall from stock to um the highest push which ultimately isn't worth all the hard work but it's not 
about the destination you guys it's about the journey thanks for watching i will catch you on the next one